Don't you know we serve a big God on this morning? I'm talking about a big, strong, powerful, mighty God. I'm talking about the same God who spoke a word and created all of existence, the heavens and the earth. I need you to stand up right where you are in this morning and put your hands together and help us praise this awesome, mighty, powerful, big God. I don't care if you're in your pajamas or what you may be doing, because he's so worthy, y'all, of all of our praise. Come on and put your hands together right here.
we just want to give you the praise in the midst of what they call a devastation, God. But we know you're the same God who calls the blind to see, the lame to walk, Father. You heal the sick, Father, and you still perform miracles, God. Your reach is like no other, Father. Your reach is higher than no other. Wider, Lord. Hallelujah, God. And it reaches even now. And we thank you, Father. Well, good morning, Faith Bible Church. First of all, I want to thank the worship team for leading us into worship. They're always doing a good job. Go ahead and give them some hearts if you're on Facebook, some hand claps if you're on YouTube. Tell them, let them know that we appreciate them as well as our sound and AV team. In just a moment, we're going to go into the Word of God. But I, I felt the need to come to you and talk to you a little bit about what Faith Bible Church is doing as it relates to our return to our physical location. Here's the deal. We will not be returning to our physical location anytime soon. And when I say anytime soon, what I mean is that in the next couple of weeks, we will not return to our physical location within the next couple of weeks. The next natural question is probably, well, Pastor, when will we return? Here's the thing. We're going to return to our physical location when God leads me to return. When God says it's time to go back, then we're going to go back. The other thing is, we'll return to our physical location when I feel like it's safe for us to do so. My concern has always been for you and making sure that I don't put you in a situation where you're at risk. And so we're going to return to our physical location when God leads me to believe that the risk is minimal. When we don't have so many restrictions, when we don't have so many requirements, and where we can really worship God freely. Well, Pastor, what should I do in the meantime? I'll tell you, since we're not having worship service, you should worship through your service. In other words, you should find a way to worship God by serving others. Find a way to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Impact the lives of other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ through your service. Every time you serve, every time you serve someone else in the name of Jesus, every time you serve someone else for kingdom's sake, you worship God. And so my challenge to you in the meantime, as long as we're not having worship service, is to worship God through your service. Find someone whose life you can impact. Impact it in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Today, Bishop Alfred N. Young Jr. is going to be bringing the word. I know it's going to be powerful. I know God's going to use it in your life and mine as well. And so let's welcome my father and, and the founding pastor of Faith Bible Church of Covington, Bishop Alfred N. Young Jr. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our time together today, for all of the people that you have called and the ones who've said yes today. We praise you for that. Thank you that you're in homes and you're just everywhere because you're an everywhere God. So we praise you today, and I want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do with this message. In Christ's name, amen. Today I want to talk to you and teach you about something important. Very, very, very important. You know we're in this series entitled, Worship Will Fix It. What will it fix? Worship will fix anything, everything, all the time. Amen. For instance, David in the Bible lost his child. The Bible says while the child was sick, he fasted, he prayed, he spent time alone with God. And the Bible says once the child passed away, of course he was heavily grieved. So how do you get through it? 
The Bible says David went and worshiped. Worship will fix anything, everything, all the time. Today, though, as we close out this worship series, I want to ask you a few questions. <clears throat> Number one, I want to say <clears throat> that you may be losing what God wants from and for you. Matter of fact, not only uh, may you, you might be losing it, maybe you never had it. Maybe you are saved, but you never became a worshiper. Maybe you've been faithful to going to church, serving in the church, being around the church, but you were never a worshiper. God wants all of us to become worshipers. Now, me as a pastor and a lot of pastors, uh, you know, we need to repent. Why? Because we've talked to people more about becoming workers for the Lord than we have about becoming worshipers for the Lord. Worshipers, amen. The benefits, the how, and the why of becoming a worshiper. And I want to say this up front. Listen to me and don't be going to somebody else's service. Stay right here. God called you here. Here's my question to you. Are you a worshiper? Not a churchgoer, not a Christ follower, but a worshiper. Maybe right now during Corona, you're losing that. And or maybe you never had it. You're never a worshiper. Now, I'm going to do things a little different today. I am going to teach and I'm going to read. And the, and the reason for that is I want you to get it. I want you to get from God what I got from God. So I'm going to pay special attention to my notes today. Amen. You're going to get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, I ate at a restaurant, and uh, there's great. People know I love Gallagher's. And uh, uh, another friend of mine opened another restaurant. And in his restaurant, he had the servers, all of them come to you and do all of this fancy stuff. It was just, it was great. I mean, the, the style of it, the presentation. So I asked the, uh, the Pat at Gallagher's, what did he think? And he said, well, I don't know if he's going to make it because the food has to be good with all that style. You got to have both. So today, my style is going to be different, but the food is going to be great. Amen. Listen to this. Charles Stanley once said that he believed that most Christians in most churches have never worshipped God. Say what? That most Christians in most churches have never worshipped God. Watch this. We go to church, but we don't worship. We sing songs, but we don't worship. We listen to sermons, but we don't worship. All of these things are elements of worship but they are not worship in and of themselves, which means you can do all of them and fail to truly worship God. We Christians often mistake the means of worship, sermons, singing, fellowship, service, the means of worship for worship itself. Are you a worshiper? Stick with me today as I share and show you Amen. How to become a worshiper. It's blessed me and I know you, it will bless you. Watch this. Isaiah 6 and 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. The year King Uzziah died. Amen. This great prophet Isaiah says, that's the year I saw the Lord. He was a prophet before that, but he saw the Lord. Amen. 
He was a worker for God, but he had not seen the Lord. Have you seen the Lord? Are you a worshiper? I love this verse. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. He said, man, wow, I saw God. I saw his glory. I saw him lifted up. Hey, man. And he filled everything with his presence. Have you seen the Lord? Notice what he says. In the year that King Uzziah died, death and an uneventful event, uneventful, wasn't planned on. A lot of people, amen, they only get serious about seeing the Lord, about worship, amen, experiencing God when they have trouble, when something happens, when life gets serious. Some of you who are watching today and listening, you had a crisis in your life even before corona. You had some situation where God got your attention. Amen. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Does God have your attention? Amen. Now, <clears throat> worship is the human response to the presence of God. It's our response to the presence of God. What are you saying? This is what I'm saying. When, amen, we experience the presence of God, we will respond in worship. Moses saw a burning bush, the presence of God, so he worshiped. David lived in worship, chasing after God. Joseph and Mary worshiped God when they got the news about Jesus. The Israelites, who were delivered from bondage, who were, who were set free, amen. You know the first thing they did when they got out of Egypt and slavery and torment? They worshiped. The shepherds, the Bible says, came to the manger to worship Jesus. The magi searched around the world for Jesus, king of kings and lord of lords, and they tell us why. We're searching because we want to find him so we can worship him. Are you a worshiper? What is your response to the presence of God? Amen. Sadly, maybe you've never had it. Maybe you've never had it. Worship helps us in experiencing the reality of the presence of God. It's our response but it also helps us experience the reality of the presence of God. What do you mean? Well, God is always with us. True worship is when we encounter a holy God. Watch what David says in Psalm 139, 7. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? Nowhere. He's everywhere. Amen. But we absolutely need help in experiencing his presence, the reality of his presence. Worship helps us in experiencing the reality of the presence of God. But just because God is there, it doesn't mean that we always experience the reality of his presence. But when we begin to praise and worship the Lord, the Holy Spirit begins to work within our hearts and we become more aware of the presence of the Lord that's already there. That's what worship does. Amen. For us to experience the reality of his presence, I want that and you do too. We need to worship him. We need to draw close to him through our worship because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. How do I get God to get close to me? Praise, worship, worship. When we worship, God draws closer to us and we experience him in ways that we cannot at any other time. Amen. Amen. Worship also helps us by raising us above our problems. 
You got any problems today? Any fears, any concerns about anything? Worship is the answer. Worship helps us by raising us above our problems. Let me ask us this question. How many times have you uh, drug into the house of the Lord? Amen. Sat there. Amen. Went out the door and at the end of the service complained that you didn't get anything out of it. Maybe we don't get anything out of it because we don't put anything in it. We come to hear the preacher. Come to hear the, hear the praise team. Come to see our friends. Come to be with family. But we don't come to worship. Worship, worship. And let me say this right here, right now. We don't have to regather for you to become a worshiper. You should be a worshiper by yourself. And then when we regather, we bring in all of these worshipers together. Amen. It's like bringing a, a lot of little candles together. Amen. It lights up a lot of space. You can be a worshiper and should be a worshiper and should want to be a worshiper right where you are. In your own home. In your own time. Do you have time and place set aside where you personally experience the presence of God, the encounter with God, where you worship him? Are you a worshiper? Amen. Maybe people say they don't, they don't get anything out of, amen, the church gathered to worship because they're too busy thinking about other things or trying to make sure they get it right. Amen. Is that you? Amen. Listen. Don't come to church to perform. Don't gather to serve. All of those are byproducts. Worship. Come to worship. If we are not willing to worship, then we are not going to get very much out of it. Are you a worshiper or a server? A worshiper or a follower? A, a worshiper or a watcher? What? What? One of the reasons why our problems sometimes look so big is because we stand underneath them. Underneath corona. Underneath financial trouble. Underneath relationship trouble. Underneath depression. And I could go on and on. Worship helps us by raising us above our problems. Don't live life underneath your problem. Live life above your problem. When we worship the Lord, God lifts us to his level. Remember Isaiah? High and lifted up. And we can then look down on our problems and see that they are not as large as they first seem. When you're looking up at your problems, they look real big. But when you worship, you can look down at them, and they don't seem so big. The Bible says this in Psalms 27, verses 4 and 5. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Do you want the presence of God? Do you want to experience the beauty of the Lord? David says, I want to worship. I want to get to the temple. Watch this. The temple now is us. Do you want to get, amen, to your soul, to God in worship? Worship. Yeah. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Raise me up on a rock above my problems. As David worshiped in the house of the Lord, he said that the Lord sets him upon a rock. The Hebrew word for rock is rum which means to rise up, be high, be lofty, be exalted, to be lifted up. The Bible says that David, 
that said that God hides him in the tabernacle, the place of worship, and lifts him up and elevates him above all his troubles. Amen. All of them. What lifts him up? Worship. Above them. Worship. I got a little sign in my office that was given to me by Jeff that says, <clears throat> don't, don't uh, tell God about your problems. Tell your problems about God. How do you do that? Worship. Today, a lot of us are burdened down with troubles and problems. You need an encounter with the holy God. You need to be lifted up above your thoughts, above your troubles. You need to be set on the rock that comes through worship that is higher than you. But that will only happen as you praise the Lord and bring him close enough, amen, so that he can raise you above the things that you face. Worship. If we truly worship God, if we will focus our thoughts and our energy on letting God know how much he means to us, you can do that by yourself. And, amen, how much we appreciate him and what he means to our lives. That's worship. Do you have a worship time? I don't mean a 10 o'clock check-in to community church time whether physically or, on, or online, do you have a worship time where you talk to God about what he means to you, how you appreciate him, amen, where you invest some energy in letting him know how much you love him. Do you have that? God wants you to have that. It will bless your life. The story is told about the poet Dante Alighieri, and he was in a church where they, they were worshiping and they had kneelings. And uh, he was so into worship that he, he didn't kneel. So other people went and told the bishop that he didn't kneel at the right time. The bishop challenged him and he said, if they had been truly worshiping, they never would have noticed what I was doing. Are you a worshiper? Or are you distracted by a television? Distracted by coffee, distracted by things, amen, whether you're in the physical building or not, are you a worshiper? Have you set aside time to love on God? That's what I love about Mary. The Bible says that um, she had low faith but high love. You remember the story? The Bible says she came to anoint the body of Jesus. Knowing he was dead, uh, amen, her faith, he, she had no faith that he was not in the tomb, that he had resurrected. But in spite of all she saw, low faith, but high love. I'm going to anoint Jesus. Amen. I'm going to anoint him. Worship will energize the faith that we have. Yes, it will. It just blesses me to say this. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. That energizes my faith. Yeah, it does. True worship comes from a heart overflowing with love. God honors a heart of love. Watch this. I heard some statistics the other day that are scary. Of those who were surveyed who said they are born again Christians, those who said that they have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, 70% of them said they had never experienced the presence of God. 70% say born again, but never experienced the presence of God. That's probably the saddest statistic in the world, that you can be saved, serving, and not be a worshiper not experience the presence of the Lord. We are given an opportunity through our worship to enter into the presence of God. Amen. But some people, amen, are not honest before God. They sing songs like, His name is wonderful. Oh, wow, I love Jesus. Show me your glory. Open all our eyes of my heart, Lord. Worship is not about singing songs. It's about opening ourselves up to God. It is about laying out our lives, amen, on God's altar and expressing our love for him. Amen. 
The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Listen, don't be inhibited, inhibited when you are inhabited. He inhabits the praises of his people. But some people, amen, they don't get that. You know why? They're tight as a drum. They're all wound up, amen, so they, never, they are inhibited from experiencing the presence of the Lord. Open yourself up to worship and experience his presence in your life. Now, open yourself up to God and experience his presence in your life. Some of you might be thinking, amen, when I talk about opening up to worship God or lifting hands or saying amen. Amen. Some of you are thinking, oh, man, I'm not charismatic. When it comes to those things, you ought to be because it's worship. You ought to be, I surrender, God. You are God and I am not raising hands. You should be amen. You know what amen, amen means? That is true. Amen. Worship of God. Somebody once said it is easier, amen, to, <clears throat> um, uh, um, to, to, to cool down a zealot than it is to raise a corpse. What are you zealous about? You zealous about something. Shouldn't it be about God? When we truly worship, we are brought into the presence of God and that energizes us and empowers us. It makes us excited about being a Christian. And then we go out into the world that we live in week to week with a feeling that we have something exciting to share. Could it be the reason you aren't sharing your faith? Is because you're not a worshiper? Yeah. Anything that's exciting to us, we don't have any problem sharing. Saints are winning. That's exciting to a lot of people. Amen. What's exciting to you? When things are exciting, new restaurant, uh, uh, sports team, uh, whatever, when things are exciting, we have no problem sharing them. None, none, none. Worship makes us excited. It sets us on fire, excited about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Maybe the reason you aren't sharing isn't because you are afraid. It's because you don't worship. Because when I find something good, when I find something powerful, when I find something that's blessed me, I want everybody to know it. And you do too. Are you a worshiper? I want to help you become a worshiper. Amen. Watch this. When we truly worship, we are brought into the presence of God. How? We get somewhere and we thank him. We get somewhere and praise him. We get somewhere and tell him how much we love him. Can you imagine what when we regather that's going to look like? When all of us come back here together to worship, united worship, because we've been worshiping apart and now we're just bringing it all together. Worship makes us excited about being a Christian. And then we can go out into the world that we live in week to week with a feeling that we have something exciting to share. And with that feeling, we're going to look for opportunities to tell people about this wonderful thing that we have. And we will see God working in our lives, and that will give us more to be excited about and more to come back and worship him for and more to go and tell other people which will help change their lives. Amen. Being excited about having spent time in the presence of the Lord will send us out with more excitement. Amen. We got a guy in our church called Monty. And Monty's that way because when you speak to him, you know what he say? God is good. God is good. Is he good to you? Have you told him lately? Father, you so good. Lord, you're a blessing. I need you. I appreciate you. I adore you. 
I can't imagine life without you. I lift you up for who you are. I praise you for what you know. I thank you in every way, God. Hallelujah. That's worship. And it strikes a fire in your heart. It ignites your soul. It releases you to say to people, let me tell you my story. God is good. And the more you tell your story, the more God works in our lives, and the more, amen, excited we become, and then he uses us to change other people. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so the more we worship, the more excited we will be, and the more we will share. That will truly help change us and change other people. It's about a glimpse of heaven right now. Contrary to sometimes to how we think, worshiping is not a spectator sport. We need to realize that when we assemble, amen, we are here approaching the very gates of heaven. In other words, we don't have to be, we, what we do here to get together and apart should be a taste of heaven on earth. Let me ask you these questions. Now be honest and ask yourselves, has my worship experience lately been spiritually fulfilling? Are you just going through the motions without ever really feeling like you're part of truly worshiping Jesus? Are you a go through the motions person? Do I experience a, a sense of joy, adoration, and communion with the Lord? Amen. Does just showing up make me better? Watch this. <clears throat> a car living in a garage doesn't make it a car. It doesn't. You got to worship. Amen. The first thing that we need to look at when we think about improving our worship is how we approach worship. David says this, and I'm closing. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? Amen. He says, <clears throat> uh, these things I remember as I pour out my soul to him. Don't miss that. How to worship? Pour out your soul. Pour out your soul. Amen. How I used to be go to the house of God and under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive, stomp, uh, festive throng. What's he saying? Shout. Sacrifice of praise. What's he saying? I felt so good when I would pour out my soul to God about how good he is, how almighty he is. So our attitude should be eagerness to worship God. Now, in many churches, I would say in all churches, you always have the late crowd. That's the people who aren't excited about worship. No. Now, some of you are thinking, is he picking on me? Absolutely. Because <laughs> I'm trying to bless you. Eager to get to worship. Eager with an attitude of worship. I'm going to worship God. Amen. <clears throat> I'm not saying you have to worship God in a certain way, but I'm saying this. You ought to have a time and a place where you go to worship. Are you a worshiper? Are you a worshiper? When we truly worship, we're brought into the presence of God. It makes us excited about being a Christian. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Now, <clears throat> the Bible says this. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his thanksgiving, of his, of his passive, excuse me. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Worship. For the Lord is good. When the last time you told him that? His mercy is everlasting. Do you appreciate it? And his truth endure it to all generations. I'm excited because I'm thanking God in advance that everybody 
and all generations in my family are going to come to know Jesus. I'm claiming that promise and worship and honor to God. So today, are you a worshiper? Have you ever been a worshiper? Is there a time and a place where you get alone with God and tell him how much you love him, how much you appreciate him, where you adore him, where you don't spend time asking him? Listen, if all you're doing is tuning in to this uh, live video feed every week, and that's the extent of it. You sit there and you watch it. And maybe you're blessed by the teaching, like the music. That doesn't make you a worshiper. Are you a worshiper? Yes, keep ch- tuning in. Yes, keep learning from the word. But watch this. Become a worshiper. And the value of that will grow immensely. Are you a worshiper? Let's pray. Father, thank you today that we can only worship you through Jesus Christ. So if you're here today, right where you are, and you believe Jesus Christ died for your sin and rose again, and you're willing to tell others that you've invited Jesus Christ into your life, you can be saved and be put in a place of true worship because you're in relationship with God. If you're a Christian today, born again, saved, a server, a worker, and all that goes with that, but you realize you have not been a worshiper, you need to change that. God wants from and to, from and for you to become a worshiper. Become a worshiper, or you are a worshiper. Don't be in that 70% statistic of people who belong to church, who go to church, who serve in church, who want church, but are not worshipers. Be a worshiper. Why? Because worship will fix anything. Worship will bless you and God. Father, I thank you today for the people who have been touched by your Holy Spirit and right now are going to work on becoming a worshiper. We praise you today in Christ's name. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you, Bishop, for sharing the word of God with us. I know that you were blessed by it. And for those of you who accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do me a favor. We want to celebrate it with you. Put it in the comments. I accepted Jesus Christ today, and we want to celebrate your new life in Jesus Christ. Also, we want to tell you what the next step is. You know, a new plant doesn't grow unless it's watered, and you're like a new plant. You need water in order to grow in Christ. We want to show you, we want to tell you what that water is. So do me a favor, fill out a connection card. On that connection card, put check the box that says I accepted Christ today and we're going to follow up with you and let you know what the next step is. Also, if you have a prayer request, our prayer team is standing by waiting to lift your request up to the Lord. You can put that on a connection card as well. And do me a favor, we want to know that you were in the service. So everybody, if you're joining this service, click on that connection card link, fill it out. And so that we will know that you were here. Well, Pastor, I'm watching this on my cell phone or I'm watching it on TV. I I can't get to the connection card. Make sure you go to myfaithbible.org, click on the connection card link, fill out the connection card, let us know that you were in our service today. Now, for those of you who are members, regular attenders, followers, supporters, and want to be supporters of Faith Bible Church, The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 8 and 7 that just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in love, in earnestness, he says, make sure that you excel in your giving. I want to challenge you today to excel in your giving. In other words, to mash the gas when it comes to your generosity for the kingdom of God. At Faith Bible Church, We have five ways that you can do that. 
You can give online at myfaithbible.org or if you attend Slot L at faithbibleslotl.com. If you want to text the tithe to the Covington campus, you can text it to 985-200-2054. You can mail your offerings and your gifts in. For Covington, it's 1148 North Columbia Street, Covington, Louisiana, 70433. And for Slot L, if you attend that campus, you can mail your gifts to 57209 Allen Road in Slidell, and that zip code is 70461. You can also download the MyFBC app, and you can give through that. And the fifth way is where you do it automated, like I do it, where you set it up to where it automatically comes out of your bank uh, every time you designate, and we'll get it that way. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And also, thank you for supporting me and my family through the love offering. I appreciate your generosity with us. I ask that you continue to stay faithful in that area because God said when you support the man of God while he's on mission for God, that our God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Do me a favor. While you're giving, click on the other tab. Leave Bishop an offering because we want to support him as well. The Bible tells us when we're taught the word of God, we should share in all good things with the teacher. And so let's support Bishop as he surely brought us an awesome word today. Thank you for joining us. To those of you who are here for the first time, we appreciate you attending our online service. If you're on Facebook, do me a favor, share this video. And if you had not liked our YouTube channel yet, go subscribe to Dr. A. Nathan Young. I'll see you all tomorrow, 12 o'clock for our noon prayer time, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Sunday.